The rule of 70 states the sum of money growing at a particular growth rate will double in approximately 70 divided by X years. What this means for economies is that small changes in the economic growth rate can result in large increases in the size of an economy over time. Economists have determined several factors that influence this growth rate, including investments in physical capital, investments in human capital, technological progress, the proper use of natural resources, the enforcement of private property rights to ensure investors and producer confidence, and a stable political environment that encourages production and spending. The capital stock of a nation is an important factor in determining a nation's output, and increasing it causes the nation's economy to grow. Physical capital includes all man-made inputs into the production process, such as machinery, tools, and buildings. Having capital makes workers more productive. Capital increases labor productivity, so an important determinant of the economic growth rate is the amount of capital per worker in the economy and how it is changing over time. Economies that experience growth in the amount of capital per worker show the fastest rate of economic growth. Capital is developed through investment, but in order to have capital goods, a society must forego the production of consumption goods such as food or clothing. Since people cannot stop using consumption goods altogether, people must instead save money over time to accumulate enough money for the large upfront capital cost. Resources must be used to produce capital, some of which may not immediately increase the productive capacity of an economy. This is the reason investment is important. An investment uses resources for something that does not result in an immediate increase in economic output, but it will over time increase economic growth. There is an opportunity cost or a trade-off for that investment. The amount of the current production give it up now to have more in the future. Human capital is another important factor to an economy's ability to grow. Human capital is the amount of education, training, health and medical care, and other non-physical assets that workers have. As with physical capital, the development of human capital involves an investment that leads to rising output in the future. While workers are gaining an education and training, they are giving up working and producing output. This represents an opportunity cost. However, the workers will be more productive in the future. Thus, current output is sacrificed to gain even more output in the future. Human capital investments can be formal or informal. Formal investments include schooling from primary education to post-secondary study. While tuition expenses and the costs paid to return to school are often considered the most significant cost of education, the largest cost is really the value of the student's time. That time could be spent working and making money if the student were not in school, so these lost wages should be factored into the cost of education. However, more education is correlated with higher average earnings in the future, so the student's lost wages can be recouped later, justifying the cost of going to college. Informal training can occur on the job. When workers first started a job, they need to learn the necessary skills to perform their work. In addition, other workers may be pulled away from their own work to help the new employee develop skills. Therefore, this is again an investment in human capital. Current production is being given up in order to gain more in the future. While having a trained and educated workforce is important for economic growth, it is also vital for an economy to have the best knowledge available of how to produce products in the first place. Technology is the tools, procedures, education, and knowledge used to transform resources into a final product. Finding better ways to build a product will allow an economy to produce goods and services using fewer resources, which frees up resources to produce other goods and services, leading to a growth in output. Therefore, technological progress is a key factor in determining the rate of economic growth for an economy. Technological progress comes from investment. In this case, current production must be given up by shifting some resources from producing goods to researching and developing new technologies. Some of the research may pay off, and some may not. However, having new technologies makes an economy able to produce more in the future. Thus, it is worthwhile to give up some production today to make that possible. The rate at which an economy's output per person grows is tied directly to finding the most efficient way to produce goods and services. Available natural resources are also necessary for an economy to grow. A natural resource is a naturally existing form of physical capital that provides inputs to production, such as land, minerals, water, agricultural products, and forests. The types of natural resources available vary dramatically around the world. 
Natural resources not only play a role in how much an economy can produce, but also affect the types of goods and services produced. Natural resources can be renewable or non-renewable. Developing better ways to manage renewable resources is an important way to improve an economy's rate of economic growth. The overuse of non-renewable resources may cause future outputs to decline, leading to a slower economic growth. Because this resource is not renewable, that decrease in output can only be recouped through replacement by a new product developed through technological advances. An important determination of a nation's rate of economic growth is the legal, social, and political environment in which the economy operates. Specifically, it is important that there is a property right or the ability of an individual to own and have command over resources such as capital and property in general. Investors will not want to invest in a new factory or business if they believe that they might not be able to retain ownership. People will not forego current consumption for future consumption if there is a great deal of uncertainty about the future. Thus, it is important that there are laws in place to protect ownership and resources, whether these can be capital or labor services. During Hugo Chavez's tenure as the president of Venezuela, he nationalized many industries, making them a part of the government. Although there was some economic growth under Chavez, Venezuela experienced a drop in both the number of new domestic firms created and the amount of foreign investment from other countries who wanted to build new factories or businesses in Venezuela. No one was willing to invest because no one knew if Chavez would simply take their investment and make it part of the government. A similar issue is the political climate in a country. Because the purchase of capital and the development of new technologies is a long-term decision, it is important for firms to be able to predict the economic climate in which they will be operating in the future. Although power may move from one political party to another, a developed society's overall structure will likely not be challenged. This is not necessarily the case in many countries where coups may occur. Power structures can shift from democracy to dictatorship overnight. This type of political environment leads to a tremendous uncertainty and makes individuals and businesses much less likely to consider long-term investments. Political unrest can dampen the amount of economic growth in these economies. 